Welcome back to uh, Brothers Fine Tobacco, and uh, we're your hosts, John and Nock. Today we're going to be reviewing the Pirate's Gold. See that very well or not? Hopefully you can. Well, you just showed it in the camera, so I would imagine that. <laughs> I would imagine too, but you never know. You never know. If I can. I remember where I put my lighter. Oh, it's right there. So, uh, the same, the, the same, who, who are the producers of this? Because it's the same people that make the rollies that we like so much. Well, this is, this is actually the same. I'm going to go with the, uh, I'm not sure if he's actually just the blender, um, or if he is actually like an owner of the company. I'm not sure. But the, uh, the Puros Indios company are the people that actually make, make the rollies, their factory seconds. And uh, one thing we noticed uh, right away about these uh, is that this, these are, cigars are also done by, by the same guy who, who does the rollies, uh, by Rolando Reyes Sr. I'm not sure how you can see his tiny little name there on the back. Uh, but uh, we definitely really, really like the rollies. They're great, high-quality $5 cigars. Um, and what they do with the, the rollies is they actually uh, take all their high-end stuff, roll it up into a factory second, so you're actually smoking, you know, $15 cigar for five bucks. Uh, so those ones really like. That's actually why we decided to do this one uh, today, because we know the name, and so we're expecting uh, expecting good things about this. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed on the band it also says Reserva, so um, if that's actually true to what their uh, reserves actually mean, this should be better than a standard pirate's gold. I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, uh, as far as the band goes, it's uh, you, you saw that it's got a, got a pirate on there. He's kind of got this cross arm smug thing. He's only got one eye, or unless he's one of those fake pirates where he just switches it back and forth depending on uh, whatever eye he needs to needs to use at the time. And I think he's smoking a cigar too. If you can look real close there, I think so. Yeah, it looks like he's got a cigar in his mouth. It looks like he has a mustache. Well, he's got a mustache, but if you look on his lower lip, towards the left. It looks like a cigar or something. Mm -hmm. Kind of. Kind of. Anyway. Uh, on mine, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't see it, but it almost looks like you've got the pirate like, sneer. You see that right there? It looks like a cigar right there. Oh, I see that. I mean, it almost looks like a pirate sneer to me. Huh. Either way. Well, it's a guy smoking a cigar uh, being smoked by a guy smoking a cigar, so it's an uh, inception. Uh, as far as the roll goes on this, mine looks like it's got kind of square right here, where it was kind of sitting in, in a, the bundle or the box, uh, pressed pretty close together, so it doesn't look like it's intended to be that way. Uh, it doesn't really look like it's intended to be a box, box press, it looks like it just kind of got that way sitting, uh, sitting in the bundle. As far as the wrapper goes, it's, it looks like a pretty pretty smooth wrapper. Um, you definitely notice, uh, notice quite a few veins. I would say this is not a very, not a very smooth roll. Um, just because I'm looking up up right here by the uh, by the cap, and it's got it got a couple rough spots. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't look bad, and the roll doesn't look cheap at all. Um, but it's just a couple of the uh, couple of things things I noticed. This also looks like a double cap. So this is is this just a natural sun grown, or uh, I mean, it doesn't look like it's quite to the level of Maduro, but it's definitely not a Connecticut. So yeah. So should we go ahead? Are you gonna punch yours or cut yours? I I always cut mine. Well, I actually make a, a punch like hole with my knife, which is a cut, so technically cut. Technically cut. I guess technically just cut. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and uh what are you smelling there? I'm getting like a very earthy Not much, it's kinda of plain. Earth tones, I mean yeah, a few earth tones. I'd say like a almost like a like a like a dark, like toasty hay kinda. Of. Yeah. Kind of, kind of smell there. like you're in the barn, like a like aged, like aged barn hay. Those you know. Yeah, like like when you walk into the barn and it's a sunny day outside and you see the dust when you open the darn the the darn the, the barn darn, the darn barn door the barn door, and you get that smell of just hay that's been there for a while. Hey, that's been there a while. <laughs> so I'm gonna cut this open and uh, do a full drive. I know it's kind of stuffed up. <clears throat> hmm. It's about the same. Like when you smell it, it does have that kind of yep. barney hay 
the, 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 cold, the cold draw is real green to me. Like it's like like green vegetation is what it tastes on this. One. Oh yeah, I'm definitely getting a, a. This is like farmhouse farmhouse hay. Like you're you're going around on hay bales. That's what I used to do every Thanksgiving. Go around on a hay bale and ride like a horse? Or? No, no. Uh, we they used to stack up lots of hay bales right beside each other, and uh, we would. And we did this even though we were growing up. We would play on top of the hay, on hay bales, and push each other off because we were kind of jerks like that. So we were just fighting on top of the hay bales the entire time. A king of the hill. Yeah, pretty much king of the hill. King of the hay bale. And when I was, a lot of us would fall in between the crevices, and that's what I'm getting here. That that smell and taste of like falling hay, into crevices. Falling into a crevice full of hay that's been sitting out for a while. That's pretty descriptive. <laughs> that was incredibly descriptive. So I'm gonna light this up. Burning. Uh, I would go with. I would go with burning hay on this with a with a little bit of a charcoaly barbecue ness. Like uh, I got some got something in my nose and it right away reminded me of like the uh, like the barbecue charcoal. It's definitely darker. Darker than what I expected to be, but I mean the wrapper. The wrapper is pretty dark anyway. Even for for a natural sun grain, this is a, this is pretty dark. I will say my draw on this is excellent. It is. Uh, it's got a nice uh, nice firmness to it without being uh, without being tight. Looks like real tight. Really tight. tight. Super tight. Like like you feel like your neck muscles are being strained. But you have excellent smoke production, so it's fine. Oh yeah. It's excellent smoke production, but I feel like I'm doing this. You're working your neck muscles? Yeah, I'm working those neck muscles while, while smoking this. Yeah, it's good right off the bat, man. It actually reminds me reminds me a little bit of the Rollies. A um, little, little darker, though, I think. A little darker. Just, just, a, just a touch darker. Not as chewy. Uh, not, not as chewy and meaty yet, maybe, as, uh, as, as those Rollies, Rollies are. So... Good, uh, good, good first light. Do you have to say anything else before I? Well, as good as long. I yeah, I'm I'm getting most of the same ones with you, but this uh, it's different. It's a lot different than Rollies, actually. This is one's definitely more woody. Uh huh. There's lots of wood to it. Mm hmm. Like uh, when uh, I usually like, I know we're out, we're out of Rollies because I smoke I smoke so many of them. Till Monday. Till Monday. You actually ended up buying somebody that somebody said that had already bought that they actually left here that I didn't even know about. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh man. I didn't know that until uh, yesterday when Eric came in and told me. It's not a big deal, but it's just I was like, oh, that's where that one came from. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm getting a lot of a lot more wood taste to this rather yeah. than than uh more than the uh, Rollies do because the Rollies they have right a nice medium body yeah. to them like uh, i always think of those ones like a steak like it just always reminds me of like eating a steak yeah like, always. eating a steak this one kind of reminds me of like a lot more wood a lot more wood it's good though i like it already it is good it is good i have no problems with it at all like so we're gonna get here into the first third and be right back in one sec here guys time Mm-hmm. all right so we are here through the first third of these Pirates Gold, and I am loving this cigar already. Uh, you can see my ash, my ash dropped off. Gosh, not even a half inch, and Knox is just hanging on like a beast. If it were me, I'd tap the thing, but I mean, you're still going, man. So that's gonna fall right all over me. I know it's gonna do it like right in the last second when I'm not expecting it. I'm like, oh, maybe I should ash it. Nope. That's why I went back, you man, two pairs of pants. So I would say all through uh, this first third, the flavors have just been real and real heavy on wood. It's very oh, yep, there went. <laughs> it's a it's a very complex wood though. Like uh, we were talking hickory, and uh, I was thinking like some pininess in there, uh, and also here on the back end on the on the exhale, I'm uh, I was getting just like little hints of butter. It was yeah. very 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 buttery. You were saying cedar wood, right? I was I was tasting a little bit of cedar, and like. The barbecue, like wood cooked barbecue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Uh, that's the best way to describe it. Almost like if you're smoking meat or something, you just have your your uh, your different woods there, uh, like your mesquite wood or whatever, just sitting there, just kind of smoky mesquite, mesquite uh, or hickory or uh, all all that stuff. Uh, 
me. I forgot what I was gonna say. Smoking your meat. There we go. <laughs> but that, that's like that's like the perfect descriptor of it. It's like the combination of the barbecue and the wood. It's not only wood, and it's not just the charcoal of the barbecue. Yeah, and I am tasting that butter that you're talking about here, like right off the end. It's just real light, but it's definitely there, man. Like it makes me think of like you just you just ate fresh bread with butter on it. This is a very complex cigar. I did not expect it to be this complex. It's like toasty. Exactly. Toasty, toasty butter bread. Buttered toast. There we go. I'm very terrible with my words. I don't work goodly. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I've got high hopes for, for the last two thirds of this cigar. So we're going to get here in the second third and be right back in one sec after I uh, destroy Knock again and some worms. I'm getting destroyed too. So we are uh, about through the second third. I think Knox is actually all the way through the second third. And uh, he's about to show you his burn and talk about it. Yeah, okay, so I've smoked a lot of cigars in my time, but I've never had a burn that bad before. That's nasty. That, that, that's, that's really, really uneven. <laughs> that's nasty. It, it looks like maybe it's just not burning on this side at all. Well, you see you have this vein going up, and that's actually probably what's stopping it. So you probably have a pretty thick vein there that's just refusing to burn. And if you if you watch any of my other cigar reviews, you know that I usually don't don't touch up a, a cigar just you know get the get the full effect of it. My burn, this is actually probably the best burn I've had so far. Uh, not real straight. The burns overall have have just not been not been real straight. This is probably the longest my ash has been hanging on. Uh, and I'm gonna tap this because twice already it's fallen in my lap, and I don't want that to happen again. So. So you're also your cigar went out on you too when you were consistently puffing. It did. Yeah, I was sitting here puffing just like like I would normally puff on a cigar, and it just went and said, uh, "No, I'm not going to smoke anymore." So I actually did have to relight this thing. So mine's not burning very very well on the I guess top or bottom, whichever one you whichever. Yeah. You your at, at, the, at this point, I'd probably put fire to that to, yep. <laughs> to 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 help it right along. And his went out. So. So yeah, that was kind of that, uh, that one actually really surprised me. That, that was actually a pretty pretty big pretty big negative for me um, on, on a cigar that has been uh, just just really really good so far. I mean the, the flavors the flavors all here in the second third have just lightened up a whole lot. Uh -huh. um, I would say it's lost. Well, I mean I would maybe not not a whole lot. That's probably a, that's probably too much. Um, the charcoal is definitely uh, definitely kind of kind of faded out. Uh, that butteriness, I'm not getting that, that butteriness anymore. Me neither. Just a, just a lot of a lighter lighter wood tones is what it kind of changed to. So I guess, you know, the closer we get to the end, the lighter the cigar gets. It's not, like, it's not as heavy as it was. Um, not, not this one anyway. I would say overall, uh, overall for all the cigars I've smoked, it usually gets darker yeah. toward, towards the end. So this was a, an in, interesting, interesting change up. My draw is still excellent on this thing. Same here. Um, Yours loosened up, or considerably pretty tight. It, it, it loosened up pretty well. Like as soon as I got through half of it, the draw was just not as hard to just open up. Yeah, it just opened up a lot. There's a plus for it. I'd say, I'd say you know overall it's still a. <laughs> it's a you know there's there there's it's, it's still a good cigar you know minus the uh, the the couple negatives that that we did have. So we're gonna get here to this uh, last third and be right back in one sec your time. Not your black magic. It was white magic. It's okay. We love you, white magic. That's really just I'm sorry. It's so messed up. Look, it even changes on the screen. Show you, show you what, what weapon you're choosing. I guess if I could secretly choose, then you couldn't see the screen. <laughs> see? Based on what you change, it changes your. Oh, that's cool. Dude, yeah, I, dude, that, I, that was I, a great thing about uh, dude, I Dreamcast. love the Dreamcast. It's just so epic. It was just way too ahead of its time. That's why it died. It was too ahead of its time. How much did it cost back then, too? Like on launch, I think it was only like three hundred bucks on launch, man. Mm. I'd have to research that. Though. Don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure it was like three or three fifty. I know it wasn't four. Gosh, PS2 on launch was 500 bucks, man. On launch, it was yeah, 500 bucks. On launch, 500 bucks, dude. And people paid it gladly. Uh huh. 
I sure did. And how. <laughs> Careful, Seth. It's... Careful with As y'all can see, I'm not very good at worms. Well, you're just starting. You'll get there. Today was my first day playing worms. You remember when they did the whole GameCube thing of making it only $99? Okay. Kind of. Like, that was a selling point for a lot of people. Nintendo was like, oh, guess what? All those people who can't really afford the $300... So yep, there we go. $300 system. We got a $99 system for you. I, th I think on launch it was only... Maybe it was three? Three on launch again? I'm not really sure. We're going to have to research that. Well, when we start doing cigars and games. That's, what they, that's, what, that's actually what I want to do with cigars and games. Is like Choose a game on a system, like a, a bunch of different systems. And like even recording like this is fine. Like fine for me, you know. Uh, I don't. I feel like it doesn't necessarily have to be pro, but like get a GameCube and get a Dreamcast and like play certain games from there. So it's not. It's not only Nintendo. It's not. You know. It's not new. It's not old. It's just like things people remember, like playing Animal Crossing or something. You know. Dude, Animal Crossing was so great. Oh Dang, death from above! My God, what are you doing? Killing my guys is what I'm doing. You know, this isn't a suicide game. You're not supposed to kill yourself. You know that, right? So much stuff. Alright, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm about down to my fingers now. Well, it's because you need a fancy cigar screw, man. Fancy, fancy cigar, cigar screw. screw. So, we are just about through this uh, last third here. Well, I've got about an inch to go. I mean, it's obviously good enough to smoke all the way down to the end, so that's a plus for it. And I'm not feeling like that fire that you usually get when you get near the end. I guess like real hot because you're, you know, pretty much on the smolder again. The cusp of smolder. Yeah. And it's not, you know, not tasting that burnt taste when you get near the end either. So it's actually pretty good. If you're ever going to enjoy a cigar all the way down to the end, you always want to smoke it extra slow too because it's getting so hot toward the end. Yeah. You're, you're going to start to get just a natural just burn taste because it, there's, there's much less of a cigar to actually draw through, so. Yeah. So I would say overall the flavors here in the last third have just kind of stayed that stayed that just real light wood. I wouldn't say it didn't really change at all. Yeah, the flavor profile is staying pretty much the same. And you're uh, you had to, you had to light that one because yours yours went out. I had to relight it twice, and it was twice. still doing that weird thing where yeah, it was nasty uh, burn. where it was nasty burning. Well, here's my burn right here. It's pretty good. It stayed it stayed about this kind of. Kind of wavy burn, not not super straight, but mine didn't go real bad. Yours went really nasty, man. Yeah, uh, y'all y'all probably see it during that time when we were playing worms that it was just like going down just one way and it was staying. <laughs> the rest of it wasn't burning. Might have been the way I relit it because I had to relight this thing three times. So I would say overall it's a good cigar. Some some flaws. I guess the the veins uh, the ga veins gave gave knock a little bit of trouble, which I didn't. I didn't experience, and I really didn't expect because the veins weren't bad in it at all. They weren't. They they were just moderate, like usual. So overall, what do you think of the cigar? Did you like it? I liked it. I would revisit this again if yeah, I had the me chance. Too. Me too. Well, you will have the chance. Oh really? Me too. More of these. Yeah, more of these. I'll four more of them. Home. So yeah, I would I would say definitely one more smoking. What would you pay for this cigar? If it were uh, just single on a shelf, this would what be, is it worth to you? This would be worth four to five dollars. Would it be worth six dollars? It would be. It really would. Really, six bucks. Six bucks. I would say that that's a pretty high rating. Uh, I mean, for me personally, like, like I, I would say, I would say like four bucks. Like four bucks are what I would expect this at. I mean, I have no idea what they go for. I mean, they're obviously a bundled cigar, which you know doesn't necessarily speak to a. Speak to it, it, its price per per se, but uh, I would expect like I would expect this to be a four four dollar cigar. Uh, I would I would say that this is a, for for four bucks. This is a cigar I would buy consistently. Mm -hmm. At five dollars, I'd probably buy it every now. Occasionally, yeah. it would be an occasional yeah. thing. Six dollars, I would pay, but that would be if you know, I really wanted to like have a special occasion where I would take like 
have one of these. Right, where you specifically wanted this cigar. Yes, where I was like, this is what I'm going to get right. because of this reason. That's the reason why I get it. It's why I, I got the uh, um, other cigars that you have that are $6. Because it was a specific cigar, and I liked it, and I wanted it for that specific occasion. Which one? The Gurkha Shaggy. Oh, yeah. you're right. And the... Um, and that, that is a cigar, the Gurkha Shaggy, that it's, it's absolutely worth six bucks, man. It's absolutely, absolutely worth it. Absolutely. It's a good size. It's a very long smoke. Like, this one took us, what, about an hour? Consistently an hour. Consistently an hour. Consistently popping an hour, which I think we put it down a couple times, but I think if you were, if, if you were just really casually smoking, you could probably draw it, draw it out more than an hour. So Definitely. So, if you're not there already... BrothersFindTobacco.com, check out the shop, check us out on the Facebooks as well, you can always see what's going on here at the shop, stop by, play some Dreamcast, and as always, thank you for watching. Have a good one, guys. I usually say something like, you know, so we're through the second third, or we're almost through the second third, or something, and they let them know where we are, even though for them it's just a split second. They're actually time traveling. They are time traveling. I just said that. In the future.